Hey friends, my name is Z and you're watching Yi Miss Easy. And welcome to a new video for design technology timber specific content. And today we have 7.5 which is stock forms and sizes. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe 7.5.1 stock forms or like types and 7.5.2 which is stock, stock sizes. So check out the pain comment for all the timestamps. And we'll move on now to 7.5.1 stock forms or types, which includes regular sections, moldings, dowels, and sheets. So for starters, regular sections. Timber is sold in a standard range of cross-sectional shapes and sizes, and sawmills do this for convenience. So there's a limited range of sizes to cut. And designers can use the standard sizes when designing products. So here's a picture of the, uh, the regular sections, and they are commonly available in sizes and shapes of timber. And for moldings, lengths of timber cut into decorative shape, and there are lots of shapes like shapes available for different purposes, such as skirting, boards, and decorative edging. And molding saves time but can be relatively expensive. And the reason why it saves time is because that the manufacturer or the one that's gonna build the product don't have to like cut like that specific shape because molding already cut into a specific shape. Right here, and like these are the common molding shapes. And dowels, they are wooden rods that are round in cross section, and they have a variety of use from model making to furniture construction, and they can be used to strengthen, strengthen like simple joints, called dowel joints. And they are basically short lengths of dowel are used to join pieces of wood together with a dowel joint, which I have mentioned just now. And here's what a dowel looks like. And then we have sheets. Manufactured boards come in standard size sheets in a range of thickness and they're available in large sizes but large sheets are relatively difficult to cut and edges, edges may splinter so it's like a big like, board of sheets and they're basically a step of manufactured boards Then we have 7.5.2 sizes so here's PAR, PSE, Imperial and Metric so PAR stands for plain or round this means all four surfaces have been plain and it will have a slightly rounded edges to make handling easier and safer. And PSE is plain square edge and it's basically all four surfaces are plain but the edges are left square and joinery timber is usually PSE. And nowadays the metric system is mainly used for measurements excluding the USA and a few other countries like the Philippines I believe. So here's basically the metric system and imperial system. The metric is the one in blue, like cm, liters, kilometer, liter, and kg. And imperial is basically like inch, gallon, mile, and pounds and stuff. So here's where like, people use metric and imperial. So metric, they are introduced universally in 1965, and it's a current measuring system, and it's much more accurate and simpler. Because like, let's say like one like 10 millimeters equals one cm, it's much like uh, nicer and simpler. For example, it's like millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers. And imperial system, they are used universally from 1824 to 1965. And they are only used now in the USA, Myanmar, and, and these countries over here. So it's meant to be Myanmar, not the Philippines. And for example, it's like inches, feet, and miles. Then we have cross-sectional area. And cross-sectional area is a two-dimensional uh, shape within a three-dimensional shape. And there are three layers to, to a tree branch, the bark, the wood, which is the most species, there are two types, and the pith. And board measuring is a method of measuring lumber or timber, and this is calculated by the nominal dimensions of the lumber. The easiest way to calculate nominal board feet is thick times witness times length times trowel. And the price of a timber will depend on its cross-sectional area, like which is white by uh, width by thickness. Although it will always be sold by its width and thickness, as these are the more like the more important sizes. A few common sizes of timbers are as follow. In the diameter, the diameter is a measurement across a circle from one side to another. A dowel has a circular cross-section and it comes in a range of sizes. A few common sizes are 4mm, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 25. 
and dowels are fit and aligned into holes to reinforce the joint as I talked about just now. And here's the beach dowels and the sizes and the size. Then lastly we have board sizes which we focus on this. And manufactured boards are usually sold in the sheet measuring 2440mm 2, times 1220 meters. And in Imperial, this was 8 feet by 4 feet. And DIY stores sometimes sell part sheets such as 1220mm millimeters times 610mm because they are easier for, for like customers to handle. Manufactured boards are sold in standard thickness, and plywood and MDF are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and 25 millimeters. And chip boards are 15 millimeters and 18 millimeters thick. And here's more information. If plain timber is bought, the price will be higher because of the of like the care taken to the, to like process the length of wood. Plain timber is used for interior work where the timber is likely to be seen, so it needs to be good quality. And hardwood and softwood are normally sold in lengths uh, called planks, boards, or mouldings. And planks and boards refer to the proportional dimensions of the timber. And timber boards use like standard components such as wood screws, hinges, and knockdown fittings. Timbers, uh, like timber boards are sold in lots of different sizes and of planks and strips. PSE, as I talked about just now, plain square edge where it's smooth all around. Rough sawn, which is like not smooth, it's just roughly sawn. Moldings like skirtings, boards and frames, and veneers which are thin cuts of glue stuck into, into each other, and it's basically like plywood where the veneers are stuck 19 degrees against each other with like the grains going in alternate directions. And that's it for the 7.5 of DT Timber specific content, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this and found it useful and helpful, and if you did, Please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And also check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.